Okay, um, welcome. Today's uh, video is going to be answering uh, questions about trans stuff. I have several categories like testosterone, dysphoria questions, and also just random ones. And um, so we're gonna go through those. There's over 100 questions, so we're just gonna get started pretty fast. Um, first question, how was your first time on tea? Um, it was kind of a, like, nice moment, but it was, I got impatient quickly <laughs> with like, oh, changes happen, please. At what age can trans boys start testosterone? I assume at the same age that uh, cisgender boys would go through their puberty. So if you go on hormone blockers or puberty blockers, um, then you can just wait until boy puberty and then have boy puberty. How was the process of getting on tea? Pretty fast for me. I was in a liberal state and I went to a um, informed consent clinic on my university's campus. So it was pretty quick. I was able to just go in and be like, hey, testosterone please. And they were like, do you have dysphoria? And I was like, yes. And then they were like, awesome. And then two weeks later, I started tea. Are you scared you'll go bro go grow bald? Yes, but hopefully I won't. How has your life changed since starting tea? I am a lot more confident in many, many ways. Um, I know tea helps with fat redistribution, but when it comes to your face, do you notice any changes? Not yet. I'll put up side-by-side -side pictures. I take the picture every month, but um, I don't know. You tell me. What changes from tea are permanent and which ones are reversible? Um, I believe bottom growth and voice are the permanent ones. And then like things like fat redistribution will just revert back to cisgender female levels if you stop taking testosterone. What was the appointment of process of going through Planned Parenthood? Um, I didn't go through Planned Parenthood, but a friend of mine did. It was pretty fast for him as well. I think he was on it within two weeks. How do you get your tea? You have to go to a doctor, right? Yeah, you can go to your normal primary care physician and then they can send you to a doctor that will pref prescribe tea um, if they won't. But um, you could also just go to an informed consent clinic like Planned Parenthood um, and then they can prescribe it to you. Once I come out, how quickly can I get hormone blockers? Depends on where you live and all of that, but roughly, uh, if like hypothetically you have the appointments as fast as possible and you aren't doing anything else, you could probably do it within hopefully two weeks, but I'm not positive. How do you store testosterone? Uh, you can just store it in room temperature. Mine's like over there, just in a little bag. I keep all of it in a pencil case, so it can be anywhere. What testosterone are you taking? Um, testosterone, cypionate, um, I started out at a very low level and I have worked my way up to about 80 milligrams a week. I, I, I'll put up if I did the math wrong. <laughs> How long was the waiting process? Not long at all for me. Like I said, it took me two weeks-ish. How, uh, how you felt about tea when you were starting it? I was really scared to start testosterone. That's why I said before I started at a very low dose. I started at a very low dose. I started at as low as possible. Like, let me do the math. It was like 0.05. Gosh, it was like 100 milligrams for two weeks. It was like 50 milligrams a week. Um, it was very low. Yeah, very low. <laughs> um... Are you doing your shot in muscle or fat? Uh, I'm doing intramuscular shots, so like upper thigh area. What motivated you to start medically transitioning? Um, it was partially just I turned 18, so it got easier to do stuff. I didn't have to like wait on my parents to fill out forms or anything. They're supportive and they're still, they're, they were aware when I started tea, but being 18 made it easier. Best and worst parts of starting tea. Um, Best part is finally, like, recognizing myself more. Uh, worst part is um, dogs recognize me less often. Uh, because of COVID, I didn't see my best friend's dog for over a year. I visited him yesterday. He doesn't remember me. <laughs> but he didn't like me, and now he does. So it's a positive there. Um, did you always know tea was right for you? No, actually, I have always known that top surgery is something I want to pursue, but I wasn't always sure about testosterone up until like a few months before starting testosterone. I was still unsure. Um, bottom growth is uh, your clitoris becoming more prominent. Um, I assume that we've gotten to... No, there's still testosterone questions. <laughs> um, bottom growth is just your clitoris becoming more prominent. So it doesn't exact... Like, it's you're not growing a dick. It just gets more prominent. Um, 
sorry if this is intrusive, but what did you do about fertility when you started tea? I didn't do anything about it because I don't care. Like, even if I do want to have kids, I don't care if they're genetically mine. If anything, they genetically shouldn't be because I have celiac disease and um, lots of allergies and other stuff, depression, that I wouldn't want a kid to have. So I didn't bother doing anything with fertility, but you can do stuff like freezing your eggs. So if you're worried about it, you can look into it. What are ways to lower your voice without testosterone? Uh, voice training. Does your throat hurt when your voice drops? Um, not really. It, um, it only hurts, like, you know how sometimes when you're trying to sing a really high note that you can't hit, um, and, like, you can feel it in the back of your throat, like, oh, no, I cannot do this. Um, and, like, maybe your eyes water a little bit, it feels scratchy. It's like that, but it doesn't really hurt when you're talking at a normal volume, only, like, when you're screaming. <laughs> How has testosterone affected your singing voice? I cannot hit a lot of the notes that I used to be able to sing. For example, I could sing the Into the Unknown thing very well, but now it's just like, bad. <laughs> Does bottom growth hurt? No, it's it depends on the person. It's just that a sensitive area gets more prominent. So it brushes against your like underwear and like when you're sitting and stuff, it just touches more things. So it's more sensitive but you get used to it the same way that you were already used to it before, right? If that makes sense. Can you talk about bottom growth? Like when and how long you experienced it? Um, it happens fast. It is probably one of the first changes most people notice. Like this is an overnight change. They often tell you when you start tea, oh, be patient. Lots of changes won't come for a while. Bottom growth will happen overnight, but I promise it is not scary. I was very scared about bottom growth when I started tea. It was one of the reasons that I was very unsure about starting tea but I promise it's not scary. It's not weird. Like if I had fully understood that it was just going to be more prominent, like I did, that's the best way I can explain it, but I promise it's not scary. Like it's, it's genuinely okay. And it's just your clitoris gets more prominent and that's kind of it. pre tea advice, have patience and you're just as valid before you start tea as when you start it. And especially if you aren't going to start tea, it's fine. You're just as valid as everyone else. Do you get any taller? Depends um, if your growth plates have fused together already or not. I feel taller. I'm not, but I don't know if that makes sense. I just, more confidence, so I feel like I'm taller, but I'm definitely not. I have not grown. I'm still 5'6". What was one of the first things you noticed when you started tea? Um, bottom growth. How can you make your chest look flatter without a binder? sports bras, wear dark clothing to hide shadows, uh, things with patterns on them, that kind of thing. Do you have any suggestions on what someone could do if they can't bind? Um, same as before, essentially, just dark clothing, sports bras, etc. How to safely bind? Eight to 10 hours, it should not hurt. Do not sleep in it or swim in it. If you do exercise in it, no wait, no swimming, no, brain? Do not sleep in it and do not exercise in it. If you want to swim in it, make sure you go a size up so that you can breathe safely. How can I make my own binder? I don't know. Um, Google it. Sorry. <laughs> How slash where do you get a binder and do you need to go to a specialist before you do? No, you don't. Um, I always recommend GC2B binders. It's what I'm wearing right now. They're my favorite brand. They're the ones that I highly, highly, highly recommend. Um, so yeah. I, I say to go to them because they're probably the best. Can you wear a binder even if you're not trans? Yes. How to ask for a binder? I feel embarrassed. I feel yeah. Maybe just don't ask and then get it and yeah. That won't work for everyone, but you can try it. <laughs> Is trans tape safer than a wearable binder? Trans tape stretches, so it's usually better for people with smaller chests to begin with. Um, it's not necessarily safer. You can just do different things in it. Like you can sleep in trans tape and you can um, exercise in trans tape because it stretches, but it's not necessarily safer. It just works differently. Do you ever pack? Sometimes, but rarely. Do you pack? If so, what do you use? Socks. Um, I also just got sent a bunch of packers, so I might eventually start using those. <laughs> My video cut out. Oops. Hey, how does the packer stay in place? Tight underwear, um, there are packing pouches for packing underwear. There's also attachable packing pouches. Some people safety pin it to their underwear, 
Um, there's lots of options. It really depends on you individually. I usually prefer to wear tighter underwear so that it just stays in place, but I don't have to deal with like having a pouch or something for it to stay in, uh, but it's up to you. What am I if I use she, they pronouns? Whatever you want to be. How to ask someone their pronouns. Always afraid I might offend. Um, essentially, I feel weird asking for pronouns, even as a trans person, and even though I appreciate when people ask me, it still feels scary. I usually just say, introduce yourself with your pronouns because then it opens the floor for them to do it. And then if they don't say their pronouns, so if I went, hi, I'm Beckett, he, him, and then the other person was like, hi, I'm John, then you could be like, oh, nice to meet you, John, what are your pronouns? That's like a nice way to get the ball rolling. I feel awkward correcting people when they use the wrong pronouns. Okay, I have weird advice for this. It depends on who you're talking to. Let's say it's someone you're never gonna see again, like a waiter or a stranger or just some random person that's walking by, right? I don't bother correcting them. It's not worth having a conversation with someone I'm never gonna see again, who's never gonna make the same mistake again because I'm never gonna see them again. So I don't bother. If it's someone that I'm going to have more conversations with, like a teacher or a friend or um, like just anyone that I will meet again, um, I usually, uh, if I'm in a group setting, like let's say the, that it's a teacher, I'm in class and the teacher says ma'am instead of sir, then after that class, when the teacher is by themselves, so they don't feel threatened, they don't feel like I'm attacking them in any way, I would say, hey, just as a heads up, you said ma'am earlier, I just want to let you know that I usually prefer sir, um, so thank you, I hope you keep that in mind for future classes, that kind of thing. Um, I find that it's less awkward for everyone involved. Um, and then if they do the whole like, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm a horrible person, that is completely my fault, you should hate me, then nobody else has to witness it, except for you. What are some good ways to remember pronouns and how to correct yourself politely? Um, for correcting yourself, just be like, oh, that's Sarah, she, they were on their way to the store earlier. That kind of thing, just cut yourself off, correct yourself, move on. Don't say anything else about it. In private, if you want to apologize to the person, feel free to do so, but do not do it in front of other people. Um, good ways to remember, uh, correct yourself even when you're alone and it doesn't affect them. Correct yourself in your brain when your brain misgenders them. Just, that's the easiest way to get used to it. Tips for helping parents adjust, have patience um, and correct them in a way that suits them. Some people need to be told every single time, like he or her. Like you gotta correct them every single time and that's what works best for them. For other people, they will correct themselves and then they need like, oh, thank you, I appreciate that. And then they can move on. So kind of figure out what works best for them specifically and then work with them. How long did it take you to find a name? Also, any gender neutral name ideas. Um, it took me a while to find my name, long process. I was very unsure. Essentially, I had a list of my favorite names. I got them off of baby name websites. I wanted my name to start with the letter B. Um, cause if you might remember, cause you've been following me for a while, I went by B because it was my nickname already. So I went by B because it was gender neutral. Um, so I wanted a name that started with B, made a list of my favorites off baby name websites. Here are some of the other ones I considered. And then I had my favorite, which was Beckett. And I was like really stressed about trying it out. I was like, people already adjusted to B and I don't want to be a burden on them. And then I mentioned that to my friend, AJ, shout out to him. And he said, okay, Beckett, I'm going to call you Beckett because you're not going to ask me to. So I'm going to start doing it. And that was kind of like the push that I needed. And then I told my family, can you call me Beckett? And once I realized I liked it, I told everyone, <laughs> hey, I'm trans and I don't know what name to choose. Um, baby name websites and then test it out. And if you like it, keep it. How often do you get dead named? Never. How to pick a name and how to know it's right. Um, baby name websites and it won't feel like some magical Disney princess moment where it's like, this is sparkles everywhere and it's amazing and perfect. It'll be more like, yeah, that sounds like me. Sounds good. Um, if you had dysphoria, how did you deal with it? I did everything I could to make myself comfortable in situations where I felt this work. For example, um, if I don't like how I look in a certain shirt when I'm not wearing a binder, I don't wear that shirt unless it's a day where I'm binding because you need off days and stuff. I also have shirts that look good, like black shirts that make me look flat even if I'm just in a sports bra 
I wear those on days where I'm not binding. So I do what I can to make myself comfortable. What's the weirdest thing that makes you dysphoric or euphoric? Weird thing that makes me euphoric, holding glass soda bottles. I'll put up a picture so that you fully understand what I mean, but just glass soda bottles. I love them. Just ba basic info on gender dysphoria and euphoria. I know what it is, but I'm curious how you would describe it. Um, like pure confidence and adrenaline is euphoria. Like it's beautiful. And like completely like feeling your skin crawl and like grossness is dysphoria. And I have told some of my cis friends, I feel really sad that not everyone can experience gender euphoria. Like I would love my friend to just feel that pure happiness that I get when I have gender euphoria moments, but like not everyone gets that. How to help someone with body dysphoria when it's bad? Ask them because it varies person to person. Is it common to not have bottom dysphoria? I wouldn't say common, but it's more often that people don't pack than people don't bind, but it varies. Hey yo. Uh, how do you deal with dysphoria? Um, I do what I can to make myself comfortable and I remember that I am valid and special and amazing and all that. How do you deal with height dysphoria? Okay, um, you can get lifts to go in your shoes, but also just like, no, I'm taller than Daniel Radcliffe and that's enough for me. So find a celebrity shorter than you and anytime you're feeling bad about it, know you're taller than them. What is the first step once you think you're trans? Um, I would say social transition usually comes first, like telling close people around you, like, hey, I'm trans, here's what I'd like you to call me, etc. And then usually medical stuff comes next and then usually legal stuff because to do the legal stuff, you have to prove you made med medical progress. So yeah, that's roughly the order, but it completely varies person to person. You can do whatever order you want. Um, what's the top surgery process like? Uh, this varies a lot, so I can't really answer it in a broad enough way to be helpful for everyone, but essentially you call up a surgeon and you're like, yo, can you give me surgery? And they'll be like, I don't know, talk to your insur sur insurance. And your insurance will be like, I don't know, let's talk to them. And then it, it happens somehow in the, in the process. Can a non-binary person be on T and surgery? Um... Yeah, I, th I don't fully understand what you're asking, but yes. I was wondering about top surgery and did you have a gender therapist? I don't recommend having a gender therapist. I think that a normal therapist can help you with all of your problems. Meanwhile, a gender therapist is usually just there for the process of figuring out your gender. So for me, I had other problems other than just dysphoria stuff. So I got a normal therapist and she was amazing. Shout out to her. And she helped me with all my problems, including my gender stuff. So I usually recommend getting a normal therapist because they can do both, but then you gotta make sure that they're like trans inclusive and all that. Um, do you need surgery to really be trans? No. Dating while being non-binary is hard for me. Do you have any advice? Um, uh, make sure they respect you. <laughs> I don't know how in depth to go on that. Um, how do I ask a trans guy out? Same way you'd ask anyone out. My boyfriend is trans and it's complicated for him to stay over at mine. Um, I suggest trans tape because you can sleep in it. Do you have to overcome internalized transphobia? Yes. I don't know how I overcame it. Self-acceptance, how? I don't know. Progress, time, I don't know, cheesy answer. How have you been able to cope with others' transphobia? I ignore it and take the high road. How to deal with transphobes? Ignore it and take the high road. <laughs> How did you deal with uh, transphobic jokes? Um, I usually was the person who would correct them and be like, hey, that's not cool. But sometimes I just ignored it and didn't talk to them ever again. Plan on coming out soon because of summer. Something I should keep in mind. If people don't accept you, they're not worth it. How did you go about coming out socially? Um, I was like, hey, can you call me this? And then they were like, yeah. Or they were like, no, I hate you now. And then I made progress like that. <laughs> Ways to come out indirectly. <laughs> um, you post it on your social media and be like, hey, as a heads up, y'all, this. <gasps> my dog got a haircut. I see my dog outside the window. He got a haircut. <sighs> He's gonna look so good. Okay. Any advice for coming out? 
remember that it doesn't matter who accepts you and who doesn't because you've got a whole community of people who are here for you now. Um, how did you know you were trans and how did you come out? I knew I was trans after like five years of questioning it and then being like, you know what, no cisgender person would do that. Um, how did I come out though? Um, kind of casually, I just kind of updated people because a lot of people in my life were already like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Like even my grandparents who I see like maybe once or twice a year, they were like, oh, okay, yeah, makes sense. Explains a lot. <laughs> um, when you came out, were you scared? Yes. If you don't mind sharing, how did you tell your family and friends? Uh, my family, I just kind of updated. I was like, here's the language I would prefer now because they kind of knew I was questioning. They were aware when I bought a binder like a year before I came out to them. Um, so kind of just updated them. For my friends, um, my best friend, I sat her down and like had a conversation with her about it. Um, it was still a very chill conversation. It was essentially just a life update, but like I wanted to tell her face to face literally everyone else I just kind of updated on social media <laughs> how do I come out as non-binary to my family and get them to use my name uh come out to them and then explain to them how important it is for them to be supportive do you have any tips for coming out uh to teachers okay my dog's here now Max will say hi <laughs> this is my dog his name is Max and uh he just got a haircut do you have any tips for coming out to teachers slash tutors? Um, email them at the beginning of the year. What's the best response you've ever gotten to someone when you told someone you're trans? Oh, me too. How do I deal with being outed? That sucks. I'm so sorry. Uh, honestly, you don't gotta just put up with it. Are you good there? How to come out at school? <laughs> We're readjusting. How to come out at school, not just teachers. Um, social media update, put it on your story. And um, how to pass. I'll make a whole video on passing tips. Are you good, baby boy? Are you good? What you doing? What you doing? Who did you first tell and how? I told my sister first because she was like, sitting in my room at the foot of my bed and I was sitting at the other end of my bed and she was like, we were just having a normal conversation. I was like, by the way, I think I'm trans. She was like, oh, okay, cool. What movie do you want to watch? <laughs> Can you explain the difference between tomboy and trans man? One of them is a girl or non-binary person who likes dressing masculine and one of them is a man. How do I tell if I want to be more androgynous for me or because society says I should? Um, I don't know. Do you enjoy it? Did you ever identify as anything before trans man? Yes, I identified as non-binary for like a year. Max, why? How to dispose of period products in the men's restroom and how to open them discreetly. That's a struggle. Uh, most men's toilets are starting to get trash things for you, but um, how to open them discreetly, that's really up to you. It's a technique. Are you? <laughs> Is it scary and did you ever get overwhelmed? Yes. How to explain it to confuse cis people. Um, uh, explain that gender is something they never thought about, but you think about often. Now I have to let my dog out of my room. Maxwell. Hi. Um, is there anything people can do to help them feel more masculine while having an unsupported family? Anything that makes you comfortable, you should do it. Favorite thing about being trans, the community. How long did it take you to be sure you were trans? Five years. Can gender fluid people live as their correct gender in the US? In some states you can have gender marker X, but not really. Um, what can I do for a friend whose parents are not as accepting? Um, support your friend. I don't know if there's trans stuff, but I want to get top surgery. Um, but I don't want to go on T. That's very possible. Are there any benefits to identifying as male? Yes privilege. Are there any drawbacks from identifying as male? Um, I have to be a straight white man. Did you ever have doubts? Yes. That's called internalized transphobia. What's a good way to support a friend who just started transitioning? Ask them. Have you stopped questioning your identity now? Yes. 
How do you react when you hear good or bad news about trans rights? Kind of like a, oh fuck, again. And that's the all of the questions I have. They were all asked on my Instagram, so if you want to participate in the next time I do a video like this, make sure you follow me there because that's where I do Q&A type stuff like this. But other than that, that's the video. I just answered over 100 questions about trans stuff. I hope you enjoyed.